Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Thursday. I hope the week is going well wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. It should be a decent Thursday morning for you today or Thursday afternoon, depending on where you're watching this video, of course. But Arsenal have progressed into the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Very convincing 3-0 win away at Preston last night. Uh, goals from Ethan Wanieri, Gabriel Jesus, Kai Havertz, they did a very comfortable win. So we're going to talk about that game in today's show, reflect on what was a very comfortable night work, look at what Mikel Arteta's had to say. We're going to talk about Ethan Wanieri, the star that keeps shining even brighter for Arsenal. What a goal that was as well. Go through my player ratings from the game, Some got some questions and, well, I've got some comments and opinions from you guys as well who uh, sent those in on the final whistle yesterday. So plenty to get stuck into, like I said, and what was a very comfortable win for Arsenal, just what you wanted really in this sort of game. Yes, they can be tricky sometimes going away to championship clubs, but Arsenal put out a very strong team. Surprisingly strong, actually. It was, it was stronger than I thought. Uh, in terms of the midfield and the attack, it was pretty much as a given, although he started Martinelli, I was a little bit surprised by that. But I thought in defence, maybe you might see, like we did in the first, in the game against Bolton, might see Josh Nichols at right back, might need see Miles Lewis Skelly at left back, and that would move Zinchenko potentially into midfield. But no, had Durian Timber playing at right back and Alexander Zinchenko playing at left back alongside William Saliba and Jakob Kibbe or Tommy Setford, of course, got his start in goal. So a little bit stronger start in 11 than I was expecting, but I'm glad Mikel's taking this competition seriously. As I've said before, I want Arsenal to go on and win this competition. Um, cup competitions have not been good enough in the last few years. That needs to change. So I'm glad he's taking it seriously. Uh, and they got the result that they wanted. It was a comfortable first half. Preston didn't really cause them too many problems. And once Gabriel Jesus got the goal that he did, sort of midway through that half, it just settled everything down. And Arsenal didn't really look back after that. Really important goal that for Gabriel Jesus, no doubt about it. We've all been saying, and we just needs a goal. Needs a goal to hopefully set him up for the season. And he got it. It was a really sharp finish. Good little knockdown from Jakob Kivior from Gabriel Martinelli's cross, wasn't it, from a free kick. And a really sharp finish, I thought, from Gabriel Jesus. And maybe that's exactly what he needed. You know, doesn't have time, didn't have time to think about the finish too much. He didn't have time to think, oh my God, I haven't scored since January. What am I going to do here? It was just an instinctive, on the half volley smack. Really nice finish. Gave the keeper no chance. 1-0 and then it was 2-0 soon after. I mean, what can you really say about Ethan Monieri's goal? It was just brilliant from such a quality young player. Superb goal from him. Jesus laid it off to him, so involved as well in that goal, Jesus, which is another good thing. Obviously, all the talk is about Wanieri's finish, and it was a brilliant finish, you know, classic, curling it into the far corner with that left foot. But it was the touch. I just love that touch when he just received the ball from Jesus, opened his body up, just cushioned that touch into his path. So there was nothing else he could have done after that apart from take that shot and aim for that far top corner. It was just such a real high-quality precision piece of technique from Manieri to create that opportunity with that little cushion first touch it was such a good goal um and that made it 2-0 and um yeah it was a deserving lead for Arsenal at that point they'd gone close Manieri could have scored earlier than that he'd already had a shot that he put over he had that chance when it was Marino laid it back to him that he sort of couldn't quite get the contact he wanted and put it straight at the goalkeeper there are other half chances as well so 2-0 at half time couple of changes plan changes from Mikel Arteta at the break uh, and one of those, Kai Havertz, scored the third goal. Great header from Kai Havertz, that really quality header. Another assist from Kivior, quality ball in from him on his left foot to make it two assists for the night. And uh, Havertz with the header to make it 3-0. Again, there was chances to make the scoreline greater. Raheem Sterling had a couple. It was one really good block, wasn't there? Good save as well to deny Sterling um, and, and a few others as well. Tommy Setford at the other end kept his clean sheet, didn't really have a save to make. Preston had a couple of sort of openings, but they didn't take en make enough of them and didn't really get to test Tommy Setford. So it's 3 0, full time, job done, happy days. Obviously, lots and lots of talk about after the game was about Ethan Monieri, but first of all, in terms of the actual match itself, um, and there was what a way support that was for Arsenal. 5,600 travelled up there to see what was, you know, expected to be very much a second string play in Preston on a Wednesday night. Said, what a special goal for them, the supporters, because we had 6,000 people here. It's 
just incredible their commitment their passion to come and support the team it really made a difference so thank you so much to them it's very positive winning into the quarterfinals we had some really good moments some fantastic goals really good mixture between senior players and very young players some of them having their professional debut with us so overall a really good night yeah a couple of debuts it was tommy setford and aiden heaven as well who came on on the second half Ethan Ranieri dominated the post-match press conference, as you can imagine. On his goal, he said, look, he did it yesterday in training, so we're used to that. He's a big talent. He's got the right attitude. He's got the right players and context around him. We need to make sure that we put brick by brick in the right order, but we have some player here. On his character, he says so much personality. He wants every ball. He wants to make things happen. Outside and around, he's still a bit quiet as usual. He's 17 years old, very respectful. His work ethic is tremendous. And he loves what he does. You can tell that. And he is just a special player. If Mikel, if Mikel was hoping that the um, sort of clamour for Ethan to get more minutes was going to go away as the season went on, I think he's very much mistaken. Because every time he's going to get his opportunity, I feel like he's going to thrust his hand up in the air even more to demand more minutes. Because he is just a really special player. I've said it this season. He's ready to play and start in the Premier League. I've been a bit disappointed he hasn't started in some of these Premier League games while Martin Odegaard's been out. And he just looks ready. Yes, again, last night it was against championship opposition, like in the first round. It was against Bolton, League One opposition. So it's very, very different to playing really, you know, top quality, high-end Premier League sides. But he's got something about him. You can see he is just, as Mikel said, we have got some player here. And he is some player. And I just, he's going to get more minutes as the season goes on, I'm sure of it. You can't keep... Well, not can't keep ignoring because he's not ignoring him. He's giving him minutes. He's playing games this season. He's played more games than I expected at the start of the season, put it that way. But he's certainly got the quality to be playing even more than that. I mean, he's a record breaker now as well. He's the youngest player to score for Arsenal in each of his first two starts, 17 years, 223 days. And again, yes, they were in the League Cup, but still no one in Arsenal's history has done that before. And that shows the cut type the kind of level that he's now operating. He's Arsenal's third top scorer this season now, I think after that goal yesterday, behind Havertz and, and Pukai Saka. He knows where the goal is, but it's not just where about the goals. As I said, that first touch excited me more than the finish almost for his goal. And when I watch him play, when I watch players, you know, senior players want to give him the ball, be totally confident to give him the ball when he's in space or when he's surrounded by opposition players. They don't care. They'll give him the ball because they know whatever the situation is, he can handle it. And they've got complete and utter trust in him. When you see that, you know, there's a really special kid who is just there waiting to be unleashed. And it'll be really interesting. I mean, look, he's not going to start at Newcastle at the weekend. I'm absolutely convinced of that. There's an argument again to say, well, why not? He should be. But he won't. I'm sure Mikel will go back to the sort of midfield. You know, Declan Rice will come back in. We'll have Marino in midfield again. Um, wait and see what happens with Thomas Partey in terms of where he he plays. You'd imagine he'll go into midfield as Durian Timbers back at right back on Saturday. So Ethan's going to have to make do to a place on the bench again. But as the season progresses, he's going to get more minutes. There's no doubt about it. And it's just a really exciting talent to have on our hands. You know, when you look back to some of the 17 year olds we've seen come through before, Jack Wiltshire, um, Sesk. Obviously, you know, it looks like and he's got a long way to go, of course, but it looks like he has that sort of he is that sort of level where at 17 he can come into the team and just look perfectly at home. And it's really, really exciting. And um, yeah, delighted for him again last night. On Gabriel Jesus quickly, Mikel said, very happy. I think it's going to unlock that for him. He looks really happy. He's performing. The attitude is there, but he needed that feeling that he can put the ball in the back of the net. As I said earlier, I just hope it really, un as Mikel says, sort of unlocks something for him and it can really set him up for the rest of the season now. Because I have thought in recent games, he's looked a lot better, Jesus. He's looked sharper. He's been more involved. He's looked more confident, but he's been lacking that one thing, a goal. He got that last night. He got an assist as well. And you just hope it can be what Arsenal really need from him because I've said it so many times if Arsenal are going to do anything this season they are going to need Gabriel Jesus to contribute and contribute heavily you can't just rely basically on Kai Havertz as that striker you need someone else and Jesus we know has got the quality to be a top quality to be a top player in this league he hasn't shown it for a long time he hasn't scored enough goals for a long time but hopefully fingers crossed this can be what he needs to really kick on and start to contribute in the final third, the way that we all want him to. So, yeah, good night for Gabriel Jesus as well. Good night all round, I thought. It, it just really was a lot of positive nights all round. We had a couple of first-team debuts, senior debuts. Tommy Setford, great for him. Clean cheat on his debut. Aiden Heaven as well coming on, adding to the debuts that we saw in the 
um, game against Bolton before that. So even Mikel has certainly used his competition to blood a number of the youngsters. Really good for Tommy Setford. Wasn't overly tested. Looked a little bit nervy at times, sort of coming, claiming crosses, that sort of stuff. But uh, on the whole, a relatively worry-free debut for him and a really special night for him and his family. There has been a little bit of concern at the halftime subs as some you know, of, of these players carrying injured. Mikel said it was all planned. So obviously, Durin Timber went off, Marino went off, Martinelli also went off in the second half. But those halftime subs of Marino and Durin Timber, Mikel said afterwards, if you didn't know already, that they were planned. As he says there, you can see the quote if you're watching on YouTube. He says, that was planned. We had a lot of issues in the back line. We wanted to share the minutes because we lost Gabby, we lost Ben as well on top of the other players to make sure we wanted to be competitive, make sure that... Um, as well that we protect players because we have a lot of games coming up now. I'm not sure yet what's going on, what the deal is with Ben White. Maybe find out a little bit more at the press conference tomorrow ahead of Newcastle game in terms of why he's not around. Um, but, you know, during Timber, 45 minutes. Thomas Party came on for the second half. Uh, got a comment actually a little bit later on. We'll talk about that. I was a bit surprised maybe Thomas Party came on for that second half. Did he really need to? He had Josh Nichols there. But obviously we know sometimes Mikel likes to go stronger than we all uh, expect him to in some of these games. Player ratings-wise, this is what I've given for them. So Setford, I gave a six. As I said, did nothing wrong, really. Looked a little bit nervy at times, but on the whole, a decent first start for him. Gave him a six. Timber and Saliba, I gave sevens. Zinchenko, I gave seven. I thought Zinchenko played quite well, actually. He sort of moved the ball around. He was heavily involved, as you would expect. Him and Jorginho combining in that sort of deeper midfield area pretty well, um, making an Arsenal tick, I thought. So I gave him a seven. Kivior gave an eight. Two assists for Kivior as well. So, you know, really good night for him. Excellent ball in for Kai Havertz. I thought whipped that in with a lot of authority. Jorginho gave a seven, um, sort of ran that midfield, obviously against a relatively limited opposition in terms of quality, but still ran ran the midfield, especially in the first half. So gave him a seven. Wanieri gave a nine, man of the match. Had to be really for that goal and just his general all-round play. Marino gave a six, played all right. Marino in that first half, almost got an assist for Ethan. Um, didn't misplace a pass. Um, Marino, I think it was 26 passes out of 26 he made. Ethan only misplaced one pass all game. He ended with a 98.6% pass completion rate, something like that. Out of 56 passes, he misplaced one. Again, just shows how comfortable he is in possession. So again, Marino, six. Martinelli, a seven. Sterling, a seven. Jesus, an eight. Sterling, bit hit and miss. Did cause them problems, though. He always does like to run at the run at defenders. He always causes them problems. But again, that sort of final third, that last action, maybe a little bit lacking, but I gave him a seven. Subs who came on, Kai Havertz obviously came on, scored his goal. He played 45 minutes, Thomas Party as well. Um, Lewis Skelly, Heaven and Saka coming on sort of during the second half. But out of those, you know, I thought Kai Havertz took his goal really, really well. Lovely head of that, proper strikers. Head of that, so fair play to him. So those were my player ratings. When Yeri man of the match for me, Setford six, Timber seven, Saliba seven, Kivior eight, Zinchenko seven, Jorginho seven, Wanyero, Wanyeri, sorry, nine, Marino six, Sterling seven, Martin Lee seven, Jesus eight. And there's a draw, if you haven't seen it already. Not a bad draw for Arsenal in the quarterfinals at home to Crystal Palace. Not Tottenham obviously knocking Man City out yesterday. Uh 2-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, United under Rude Van Nistelrooy. Um, 5-2, they beat Leicester. So they've got a game at Tottenham in the next round. It looks like Ruben Amarin will be in for that one. Newcastle, Brentford and Southampton, Liverpool. Good win for Liverpool at Brighton yesterday. So decent draw for Arsenal. Yes, it's an all Premier League draw. So there's no easy games left in this competition from this point onwards. You wouldn't think there would be from the quarterfinals. But a home draw against Crystal Palace, decent draw. It means Arsenal do not travel out of London, I think, the entirety of December. So not have to worry too much about travel issues in that one. And it's a really good opportunity for Arsenal to book their spot in the semi-finals. And you imagine looking at those teams who are left, they'll be coming up against a difficult team in that semi-final. But one of Spurs and Man United are going to be going out. Um, and you'd imagine they're probably, I was going to say Newcastle will go through. I'm not sure Brentford's such a good team nowadays. You imagine Liverpool certainly book their spot in the semi-finals. But decent draw for Arsenal, give themselves a really good shot of trying to get themselves to Wembley. Moving on to a couple of comments from you guys before we wrap this one up. And then Theo says, hi, Charles, regarding positivity and as a comment on the Preston match, in spite of all the terrible injuries this year, we have a second team who would start in most top flight clubs. Jesus, Sterling, Ranieri, Zinchenko, MLS, Jorginho, Kivior, and Tierney, not to mention players like Tommy Asu, who may have to fight for a spot in the starting 11 when healthy. This journey will be better for nights like tonight when non-starting 11 players put in a tremendous shift, get the job done, can feel needed, an important part of the team. 
And that's from Maltese Guna, Theo. Uh, Kinga says, I'm chuffed Arsenal won against Preston. Despite all the injury issues, Arteta and his team are coping well and grinding out wins. When Yeri, our star boy, is a beacon of hope for the future. The lad shows he's ready for prime time and beaming with confidence. Absolutely. So it's all in Arteta's hands now to play Ranieri more in the Premier League and Champions League. Who knows? He could very well be our own Lamine Yamal. Our upcoming match against Newcastle is just another game. It's a crucial battle on hostile territory. We must be ready to fight for a precious three points. Let's go Gunners. And then Mad Max, a little bit of a different take here. It's a longer one, so I'm going to... I'm not going to run through it all, but talks a little bit about his dislike for load management and the way that Arteta is playing giving too many minutes to certain players. He talks about why Timber was taken off at half time. That's great. He's just come back from injuries, but why bring Thomas Party on uh, when it already 2 0 up in full control? Baffles me. Why not bring on Josh Nichols? Uh, he also talks about bringing Saka on as well when the game is 3 0. And in the 60th minute, does he really need to do that? He says, Why is a reason? Does nobody else not see this? No, I agree. I was surprised at those substitutions. Um, definitely surprised that Thomas Party really needed to come on for that second half. Um, I don't know if Mikel thought he didn't want two really young kids on the, on the pitch at the same time. I doubt it. He had it like that against Bolton and the game was in complete control at that point um, last night when uh, the halftime whistle went. So, yeah, I was surprised. I thought Josh Nichols came in. I don't know why he needed to play Thomas Party. Uh, and again, do you really need to bring Saka on at 3-0? Probably not. But we say it all the time. We always will say it all the time. Mikel does it, doesn't he? And um, it's, uh, yeah, it is a little bit frustrating. And you're not the only one who sees this. You're definitely not the only one who sees this, Mad Max. So thank you very much, everyone, for your comments. Appreciate that. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Um, not sure exactly what's going on at the moment. I think I'm going to be recording Inside Arsenal Extra Time a little bit later on today with James Benj. I think that's going to go out tomorrow morning, though, in place of my usual show, because I've got some stuff going on, half-time stuff going on, which means I'm basically out of the house all day tomorrow. Uh, also, hopefully got a very special recording going out with someone a little bit later on today as well. That might be published later on tonight. Again, have to wait and see, but keep your eyes peeled for that as well. So a couple of things coming up. Uh, if you do want to get involved in Inside Arsenal Extra Time and send in some questions for us, and you know the usual drill, extra time at the top, leave your question, your comment, your opinion, and we'll pull it together and discuss it in the show. Again, it's like 90% chance we're filming that later on today. If not, apologies, but hopefully we will, and that'll be going out first thing tomorrow morning right that's it from me everyone thank you very much for your time for watching and for listening as always have a great day speak to you soon bye bye 